The weather is about to take a serious turn as Hurricane Melissa continues to cause catastrophic impacts in Cuba, the Bahamas, and it may even cause big impacts in Bermuda over the next 48 hours. Additionally, we are about to see some of the coldest weather that we've seen in over six months across much of the United States, including areas like Texas and the Gulf Coast, which could get near freezing temperatures over the next 48 hours. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Melissa and the big weather pattern change that is coming to the United States. And so let's begin with what's happening with Hurricane Melissa right now. This is still a catastrophic hurricane that is currently moving through Cuba this morning. It did make landfall overnight as a Category 3 hurricane. Maximum sustained winds almost up to 130 miles per hour. You can actually see the eye of the hurricane just barely. It actually was able to form an eye again, but it was not really able to rapidly intensify before landfall, mostly because of the fact it already went over land and it's going over land again. It only had a short window to really intensify. Didn't have much success with that, but it is now causing catastrophic impacts across Cuba. Now, for those that did not hear, this was one of the most intense hurricanes that we've ever had in the Atlantic Ocean in history. This is actually a shot from the Sentinel satellite from yesterday of the eye of Hurricane Melissa. And again, this hurricane got down to 892 millibars of pressure. This was one of the strongest hurricanes on record in the Atlantic Basin. In fact, it was the fourth most intense hurricane of all time when it comes to pressure in the Atlantic Ocean. Maximum sustained winds were at 180 85 miles per hour upon landfall in southwestern Jamaica, where catastrophic impacts were felt near the Black River area. Additionally, this ties for the first place for the strongest hurricane to make landfall in Atlantic history. The last time we had a hurricane this intense making landfall was Dorian and as well as the Labor Day hurricane. That was all the way back in 1935, by the way. So it's been a long time since we've had a hurricane at this magnitude making landfall. And unfortunately, it made landfall in Jamaica. This also does tie the record, at least ties third for the lowest pressure of all time, which was also tied with the Labor Day hurricane. Same maximum wind speeds, by the way, and they both made landfall at 185 miles per hour. And this hurricane also shattered the record across the board. This is not just the Atlantic Ocean, but across the entire world for having the driest eye in terms of water vapor of all time, which is absolutely insane. Again, so many records and so many different things were shattered with Hurricane Melissa. This is going to likely be a retired name, I would have to guess, when this is all said and done. But this hurricane will continue to impact Cuba and the Bahamas for the next 24 hours, and then it'll closely pass Bermuda tomorrow. And also in the United States, we got a big weather pattern change coming, which we're going to talk more about in just a moment. But notice we actually have some cloud cover across the Ohio Valley in the southeast. Pretty strong cold front is making its way through the southeast, and we are about to see the coldest weather that we've seen in over six months for areas like the Gulf Coast all across the southern and central plains, with the threat even for some widespread freezing temperatures. Now, this is the forecast from the National Hurricane Center regarding the intensity and the path of where Melissa will be going over the next few days. And this hurricane could make as many as four different landfalls. It's already made landfall in Jamaica. It's making landfall in Cuba. It's going to make another landfall perhaps in the Bahamas, and it may even make landfall in Bermuda. So this can make four different landfalls in about 48 hours, which is pretty crazy. But over the next 24 hours, it will continue to gradually decrease in intensity as it goes over the Bahamas as a Category 2 hurricane as the wind shear continues to pick up. And then on Thursday, this is going to become a Category 1, maybe a low-end Category 2 hurricane as it approaches Bermuda. We do have hurricane watches in effect for Bermuda. And then by Friday and Saturday, this can become an extra tropical system as it moves into the northern Atlantic Ocean. And look how far it is to the northeast by Sunday. This is vastly different in terms of speed compared to what we just had over the last 48 hours with Melissa basically stalling south of Jamaica. In this case, it's about to race at upwards of 20 to 30 miles per hour to the northeast, especially when it becomes an extra tropical system in the northern Atlantic. And so this is what Hurricane Melissa looks like right now. It is currently over eastern Jamaica. Jamaica as a pretty intense hurricane still dumping catastrophic rainfall storm surge as well across eastern Cuba right now near Santiago de Cuba and a few other areas as well and as we go late into this morning Melissa will continue to lift to the north it will be back into waters probably by about 11 o'clock or so this morning and then just after lunchtime this can be approaching the Bahamas as a category two hurricane maybe a low end cat three and then as it goes over the Bahamas it could make a brief landfall and then after that as we go into Thursday this is going to continue to lift to the north producing tons of water space and perhaps making a very close appearance to Bermuda. We may either see a landfall or at least at the bare minimum, we'll see at least some sort of hurricane force winds as this continues to lift to the northeast very rapidly. And then as we go into late Friday into Saturday, we are done talking about Melissa. Now let's talk more about the big weather pattern change that'll be coming to the United States over the next few days. And this is really going to be impactful within the next 48 hours. One of the biggest reasons why is because in our mid-level flow in our jet stream, we have a huge dip right now across the Great Plains that dig 
digs down into the southeast. Low pressure system is actually located over Tennessee and Mississippi right now. And over the next 12 to 24 hours, we're going to have all sorts of reinforcing cold air coming directly out of Canada. This is all going to be coming from northerly flow across the Great Plains. And we are about to see a very strong plume of cold air moving right across the central and southern plains today and also into early tomorrow. And this will eventually transport down towards the southeast and the Gulf Coast as we go into Thursday with temperatures falling by as much as 20 to 30 degrees in some areas. We could have some areas near record breaking low temperatures tomorrow morning along the Gulf Coast and in the southeast. We are about to see some very chilly weather right before Halloween. As we go into Thursday and Friday, we're going to have several different low pressure systems across the United States. This one right here is really the only one that is bringing any sort of meaningful rainfall or cold air. But notice the jet stream even on Friday. We're going to continue to have northwesterly flow, which will continue to transport cold air from Canada all the way back through the east coast on Friday. And then by Saturday, notice how Melissa will continue to pass just to the east of the United States. And we're going to continue to have troughing across basically the entire Ohio Valley and the southeast on Sunday and Monday. And this should lead to another storm system as we go into Sunday into Monday along the Gulf Coast with at least some potential for some isolated severe weather, showers, and even some thunderstorms all being in play. And then by the middle of next week, that's when things do start to become a little bit more uncertain. But notice that the jet stream really shifts. The jet stream will actually be lifting very far off to the north, which could allow for ridging, which may lead to a quieter weather pattern in the middle of next week. Now, this could change, but that would obviously be a good thing to begin November. Over the next 24 hours, we are expecting some of the coldest weather that we've seen in over six months in the United States. This is what our temperature anomalies look like right now. We already have a big shot of cold air that is currently making its way throughout the southern and central plains. Most areas are currently in the 40s this morning across Kansas all the way back into Texas. Here's your low pressure system. It's just off to the east of where all that cold air is. As we go into late today and into early tomorrow, notice how the cold air is all going to wrap around this low pressure system, and that's going to really be affecting the Gulf Coast states into tonight and also tomorrow morning with temperatures falling into the 40s and 50s, especially if you're right along the immediate coastline. And then on Thursday, those temperatures will be very cold across the southeast, including Florida, where many of you might need winter jackets. We're talking about some upper 60s and low 70s for high temperatures in Florida. And for those that live in Florida, that is pretty chilly. I'm not going to lie, at least for me, that's chilly. As we go into Friday, the temperatures will continue to stay pretty cold along the East Coast. And then as we go into early Saturday, we're going to continue to see below average temperatures essentially anywhere from the Great Plains all the way through the East Coast. Most areas around 5 to 15 degrees below average. And then by next week, I think things will start to warm back up again, especially across the Great Plains and across the West Coast. And these are some of the forecasted temperatures over the next few days. This is what it's going to look like tomorrow morning all across the country. We're going to have below freezing temperatures anywhere in the blue. That's anywhere from central Texas, which is, again, not very common for this time of the year, all the way back up into the Midwest, all across the Rockies, and even back over into New England. Notice the Gulf Coast will be down into the 40s and low 50s. This is, again, some of the coldest weather that we have seen in over six months. The high temperatures for today do not look that impressive. We're talking about 50s across most of the Ohio Valley. Parts of Ohio might not even get out of the 50s. All the way back into southern Alabama, we might have some areas that even struggle to get into the 60s today. That is exactly how cold it is going to be. Dallas-Fort Worth will be near 65 all across Florida. We're talking anywhere from the mid-60s up into the low 80s as far south as Miami. And then as we go into Friday morning, we'll continue to see below freezing temperatures all across the central and northern plains. And then back over in the Appalachians, there will also be some below freezing temperatures. But look at these low temperatures in Florida. Back over near Jacksonville and Tallahassee, we could be down into the low to mid 40s. It's about to get very chilly in the United States. Now let's talk more about the future radar over the next week to give you an idea of where all the big storm systems are going to be. This is what it looks like today. Across the southeast, we got a pretty decent looking low pressure system. Lots of strong winds right now across the Ohio Valley back through the Gulf Coast. But generally speaking, this low pressure system isn't really bringing much in the way of severe weather today. In fact, it's mostly just going to be some showers. Very isolated risk of severe weather this afternoon across the mid-Atlantic with damaging winds and a very low tornado risk existing. As we go into Thursday, Melissa is going to make its closest approach to the United States. It's going to stay far to the east of Florida, but it's at least in range of the map here on Thursday. And then by Thursday night, a lot of rain is going to fall across the northeast. We're talking about some pretty strong winds as we go into Friday across New England. We'll have wind gusts upwards of 40 to 50 miles per hour in some areas. On Saturday, high pressure builds from the southeast all the way back through the northern plains. And Sunday and Monday, we'll be keeping an eye on the Gulf Coast for a possible storm system to develop that could bring some severe weather. I don't think we're really talking about much of a tropical system here but definitely something to watch for for some heavy rainfall that could lead to some flooding and also severe weather potential. And then by the middle of next week, things look really quiet right now across the United States. That could definitely change. But for right now, this is good signs to begin November. But otherwise, thank you all so
so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And thank you to anybody that tuned into our live coverage of Hurricane Melissa over the last couple of days. We reached almost 4 million people in those two live streams. We were live for about 20 hours, and I only had about three hours of sleep between those two live streams. It was quite the marathon of live streaming for Melissa. Hopefully, we were able to at least keep people informed about what was happening in real time. If you are obviously new to the channel, definitely subscribe. Click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. We do videos and live streams all the time here. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Max Velocity WX. We're going to be posting updates throughout the day with any big updates that come out of Hurricane Melissa. As always, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you all again in the next video.